Hey guys, what's up? Let's talk about some fibery stuff. But first, you know, we always start out with a drink. This is Raspberry Sona American Wheat Heart State. This is a crisp, bright, citrus, and inviting beer. So Heart State, it looks like, is the brewery. And it's brewed in Gahanna. Oh my God, I'm gonna talk about this later. Let me get started. But first, it's an ice beer kind of day. And did you guys know that you can buy just a Yeti lid? I mean, I know Stanley's are all the rage right now with the youngins. For those of you who have never had a Yeti, it's magnetic. I mean, dude, Dan got me this for Christmas and it fits on like all, this is not a Yeti. This is like a cheap something that I've stuck stickers all over. So go grab your drink. Mmm, that is so yummy. Let's get into it. Hey guys, Chevy Rel here, Chevis. We're in the stuff room. We're at a little different angle today because as you can see, I am trying to stay away from the bright light in the sky. It is Super Bowl Sunday. I'm not watching the Super Bowl. I'm talking to you guys. I do have to tell you, it is one of my absolute favorite days ever. And when I say that, it's because I woke up, I had my coffee, had a bowl of cereal, I chatted with some friends, I took a nap, I woke up, I did a little like adulting like laundry and stuff, and then I took a shower and here I am. So it's a day where I didn't have to do anything that I didn't wanna do, and it's been amazing. I hope that your day is just as bomb. We are gonna start out with prizes from the last episode. You feeling lucky? So the first prize that we're giving away is actually two. These are the knitting needle markers from Knitter's Elegance. They look like this. Knitting needle and crochet hook. These are meant to put on your project when you steal the needles. So that that way when you go back, or the hook, when you go back to it, you're like, what needle size did I have on there? Ta-da! They are so pretty, too. First, I already drew the prizes because it, you know, I, I was actually trying to prepare here, people. I was trying to prepare. The knit winner, dun da 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 is Barb McKinley, or McKinley, it's L-A-Y, McKinley, uh, 5108. And the crochet winner, which are these rainbow guys, is Romaine Carlin, uh, 1249. Get a hold of me, send me your name and address, and I'll get these to you in the mail. My contact information is always at the bottom of the show notes here on YouTube. You can message me on Ravelry. You can message me on Instagram. I'm Chevy Rell. My email address is contact at stuff.com. There's multiple ways to get a hold of me. I'm not going to lie. I do not check my email very often unless it's something like this where I'm I know that I've given prizes away and I'm looking for an email, but uh, Instagram, I would you're probably more apt to get me quicker if you're just sending me like a random, hey, how are you? Congratulations. How's that for some uh, Sunday surprises? My next one is the Dark Crystal Mug. I loved these. Some of my favorite comments were about Fizzgig. Everyone loves him. He's one of my favorites too. And the winner commented on Fizzgig. The winner is Four Winds Powered Paragliding. I believe, is it Shannon? I think her name's Shannon. Cause we um, have chatted back and forth on Instagram a couple times. She like legit does parasailing or par paragliding. That's different than parasailing. It looks so cool. Congratulations. Let me uh, know 
what your name and address is, but she said, Dark Crystal, oh my God, when Fizzgig starts screaming because he wants to go on the adventure too. My oldest son stationed in Alaska and I watch this movie with each other at the same time sometimes. He'll let me know when he's going to watch and I'll pop my DVD in so I can feel a little closer to him. I mean, of all the people to win, I'm so glad. Like, that is an awesome, awesome comment. Get a hold of me. Congratulations, everyone. Um, also, I cut my hair. Some of you know that who looked on Instagram. Uh, the entire last episode, which thank you, by the way, for the, everyone who said that they liked my hair. Uh, the entire last episode, all I wanted to do was, like, cut off, like, all this stuff. And when I was editing it, I hated it. So then I got a bee in my bonnet and I pulled up a YouTube video and uh, Brad Mondo helped me cut all the crap off at the bottom. So now I'm rocking this. However, right now it looks, doesn't it look crooked? It's not crooked. It just must be the way I'm sitting. Anyway, it's gonna be one of those days. I do have a couple FOs. One of them is spinning. I spun my Care Bear fiber, which I called it Care Bear. There is a wool, a wool, a mill close to me called the Wooly Knob. Matt and Jamie own it. They're my friends. They are at a lot of the fiber festivals near me. And when I was up at Allegan, I was going to snag this bump myself. And my friend snagged it before I could and gave it to me. My entry sorry if you can hear that dan's working on the kitchen yay this is my entry for the new to you mal i wanted to work on my long draw now this is chunky i let this be whatever it wanted to be but i watched a video Stand by, I didn't write it in my notes and I can't remember now what the video was. I gotta look. So I watched the long draw spinning technique using Rolex video by Jillian Eve. You don't have to use Rolex to learn from her technique. I know how to long draw. I have long drawn in the past. Drawn, nah. I didn't say draw. I s promise I can speak sometimes. I just wanted to pick up some tips and tricks maybe that could help me be a better long draw spinner. This fiber, I will say, was pretty chunky. Um, lots of fiber, it has to do with how it was prepped. This did not spin like butter. So there are some chunky chunks in it. And I'm fine with that, but I'm not even mad, dude. I'm so excited he's working on the kitchen. Um, he's hanging my shelves. I would like to get some fiber that is not like, doesn't have chunk lunks in it, you know? Like, and I think I have some in my stash uh, to practice more on long draw, but I really did like her techniques and how she explains things. So if you guys, and she has lots of spinning videos. So um, if you guys want to check her out, I would recommend it. Uh, I know everybody learns different and we all kind of look for different. I mean, this is a shit show. We all kind of look for different things in teachers and I just really liked her style of teaching. My next FO, I finished my Blue Ridge Cowl, Blue Ridge Cowl by Laura Ayler. It's a $6 pattern. This was the pattern that I started, Quill and I both did it, Aquila, a lefty knitter, for those of you who don't uh, watch her, go check her out, she's my friend. But we all went down uh, to the Blue Ridge Mountains or Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg, and this was what we made together, and I love it. I mean, look. So see the, the mountains. Now, I love, love 
the way this fits, I have not blocked it. I've not, because I'm scared that if I block it, it will be like too drapey. And I like it like this right now. I mean, obviously I'm gonna have to wash it at some point, but uh, for right now, I'm rocking it just like this. And it is so nice. Here's how the back. The yarn I used, this is Johnny Bow Special Edition. Don't know the colorway. This is Queen Bee, this mustard color. Do I have the colorway? No. And then the turquoise is Mineville Wool Company, or yeah, Mineville Wool Project. It's, you can't get that either. So I'm sorry, you're not gonna get this, but I at least told you what they were. That's all my FOs, so y'all know what's next. Whips! And I have a few of them, and even a big one. I have some like new whips, oh my gosh. First, I'm just gonna show you my little bit of spinning. Here is my first turtle. She was a beast. And this is where I'm at on my second turtle. I can't remember where I was, like how much I've spun since the last time, but I have about an ounce left. And that fiber you can't get anymore. I, I don't think she's dying. Um, it was on a quest for fiber. She was in Canada. Next are Dan's socks, and they are out of the sock architecture book. And I am knitting the Procrastinitrix. Is that what it is? Procrastinitrix. Nitrix. Top down. Good grief. Procrastinatrix is what it looks like. I was just making up words. These ones right here. This is in a book by Laura Neal and the construction is interesting. I, I read this on the last one, but if anyone's new here, for, first off, hey, how you doing? Clinkies. This pattern, it says, everything about this sock is entirely run of the mill and familiar, except the order in which it is made. So I have made my way to the heel on Dan's socks. It is currently in my little Chipette Fiber Hustle bag. I know some of you, uh, really want these. There are still some listed on their website. They're winter bags, but I think a little birdie told me there may be a surprise in store for whatever is coming next. So go to their website and sign up for their newsletter mailing list so you can, you know, be the first to know so you can be in the know but I get compliments on this all the time and I love it I have I'm a two at a time knitter so I weigh it out and I have two balls here I will say the socks are big enough now that I think I'm going to move it to a ball sack which there just happens to be one right here I think my friend Sue gave this to me so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put the whole chipette right in the ball sack, how's that? And then the socks will fit right in it. So then I can keep my balls separate, you know. Nobody wants entangled balls. That sounds like a huge mess. This colorway is the Grab Yo Stuff Room colorway by Pretty Twisted Yarns. I can't remember where I was the last time you saw these. Somewhere in here, I am now this long, but how you do these, and I, I'm totally giving away the secret sauce, but you you need to know I'm some of the secret sauce, some not, okay? You used waste yarn. Wait, where is it? Right here. You use waste yarn, so this right here, and you do a provisional cast on at the end of each sock. Then you do some fancy schmancy stuff here. Like you add on stitches and then you bring it back in and yada yada. And then you knit the foot to the toe and then you come back in and do something fancy schmancy with the heel. So far, I really like it. I will tell you, I don't do, I wanna say, I wanna say procrastinate. I don't do provisional cast-ons enough to just know how to do it. So every single time I have to do it, 
I need to look up a video on how to do it. It's just what I do. And now I need to finish doing whatever this decreasey fancy thing is. And then I'm just going to be stocking at knitting again. So Dan socks in a perfect world. I would have totally had these done for Valentine's, which is Wednesday. So we know that's not going to happen. Uh, Dan is extremely knit worthy. And that's some vanilla knitting for when I need it. My notes are out of order because I had a future cast on because I thought I was going to record before I started it, but I started it and it is epic. I'll save that though. Um, let's see. Next is my Dave's hat, Dave hat, Dave's hat by Irina Bill. It's a free pattern. It's in my uh, naughty knitting sack. I'm still rocking the snow globes, even though it is like bright and sunshiny, but my birthday is the 24th and I'm getting shelves, people. I'm going to tell you through the whole thing. I'm just real excited that that noise is happening. Anyway, my birthday is on the 24th of February. Happy birthday to all you February babies, especially my Pisces peeps. I mean, we really are, you know, and then Clint's was the 4th of February. He was an Aquarius. Happy birthday to all you Aquarius too. My birthday is notorious for snowstorms. So I am not letting the universe or mother nature trick me into this beautifulness that's happening right now because I know she can be like, ha ha ha, psych. So I'm still rocking the snow globes. Anyway, naughty knitting sacks for those of you. Oh, and we have a coupon code. For naughty knitting sacks. And I forget what it is every single flipping time. I know it's 15% off. Stuff 15. So go check out Katie's bags. I love them. I love them. These are... These are one of my favorite clo <laughs> closures. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Like I said, I don't even care. I'm going to have shelves. I'm so excited. These are one of my favorite closures and they're naughty because on the inside, there's always something naughty. Not always, but hence the naughty knitting sacks, you know. So we have little um, bondage gingerbread guys. <laughs> so this is the Dave's hat. Did I have this started last time? I don't remember. I don't remember if I had this started. Here it is. It's a free pattern, so I'm not giving anything away here, but I'm not, I, I, mm -mm, mm -mm. sorry, sorry. I'm not talking smack about the pattern. The pattern's written fine, but for me, um, it is not intuitive. You cast on, like you'd think this would be vanilla, right? Not vanilla, not vanilla. So you cast on and it's a two by two rib, right? Then Hi, babe. Thank you so much for... Do you want to come say hi? You look really cute right now. Of course I do. <laughs> Thank you for hanging uh, the shelves. Yeah, I need you, so... Uh, you need me? Yeah, complete your thought, and then come out there so we can pick some shelves to put in the wall so you can put stuff on. Dan doesn't have a head. He's just a body. I'm the floating me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Finish your thought and then hit pause and okay. point, point at the wall and then um, you can come back and talk to them. Bye. I guess all you get's headless Dan in this episode. The body of the hat, right? Look at that pattern. So we have three, one, two, four. And like you can't, I, you always pearl the pearls. But then you, like on one row, you knit the knits and on the next row, you slip the knits. And that's how you get this pattern, which it's really cool, but I have to pay attention. Like I said, it's easy, but I don't know that I'd knit this again. I want my hats to be like, you know, mindless. This yarn you can't get, it's crazy, but oh, you can see my rainbow. I have this cool stuff on my windows and it puts rainbow in. Anyway, this is by Stonehenge. 
mess it up every time. Oh no, I was right. Stonehenge Fiber Mill. And this is their crazy skeins, which they stopped doing, but you can still get their yarn. Um, I am knitting this for my brother. I don't know, like he picked out the skein, but then look, there, well, this purpley pink, I don't know if he's gonna be in love with. So I told him I'm gonna make the hat. He can decide if he likes it. I'll make him another one if he doesn't. The yarn is great. I love the yarn. I will totally wear the hat. Um, oh, hey, it's the first time I've done that. Of all the places, seriously, of all the places for this to be when I just put that on. This will probably be done by the next time you see it. I would like it off the needles. I have another hat to start. I will talk about that later. I have two more inches to knit before I do the crown decreases. So I have too many whips right now for my comfort and I need some things off the needles and I would like, um, I've been alternating, but I am excited to, like I need, there's this freaking, I might as well talk about it next. This Yarmulata, you guys. So, oh wait, I have to, I have to go help Dan. Hold, hold that thought. Sorry, babe. Here I come. Okay, I'm back. I'm talking, talk, I'm talking about the Yarmulata. This is with my advent from Lambstrings Yarn. It was our spooky advent for October. I absolutely love it. I cannot wait for this to be done. It is a slog. It's a slog. I want it off my needles. Like this is now not bringing me joy, but I'm definitely not ripping it out. I'm going to try and just put a, like make myself put two to four rows on it at a time and hopefully I'll just get there. But this is the Yarmulata, okay. I have the back done, I'm not gonna drag it out. You guys have seen it. And if you're new here, uh, I hope that you keep watching and then you can see it when it's finished. I am knitting both the front pieces together at once. Now on my Yarma, and that's like the color so much prettier in, in person. Um, the reason that it is, it's so vanilla, you guys, so vanilla. It's stocking it with some yarn overs. But because I am doing the color thing, I have this many left. This is a barber pole. I don't know how you guys do your stuff when you're working with minis. But this marks my last one, so I know what end I'm knitting with next. Sorry, you're not going to get good color today. The way my color changes work, and I have done this because I'm a visual, I think I showed this to you guys before. I made a chart. This is my chart for the color changes. I am here, so I have this, this, and then I went further even. So I have that much more to go. I'm so close yet so far away. I don't even know the last time you guys saw that. I don't get it out very often because like why, like, you know. Hey, I knit six rows on this. What do you think? I wanted you to know that sometimes you have knitting that you are just over and that's where I'm at. It's weight on my shoulders that I want to go away and I will be so happy when it's done. So that's where I'm at there. Okay, not as pretty as of a background, but it's easier than messing around with trying to hang something in the window like I did the last time. It's just that time of year, that's what, what we're dealing with right now. We still have the deep stash cow going on, which is really a male, I just called it a cow. That is knitting something out of your deep stash that you, like your oldest thing in your stash that you purchase yarn for a specific project and you just never pick it. And I'm knitting the Across the Pond Shawl. I haven't worked on it since. I need to get it out. So I pick prizes out of the hashtag DSCal on Instagram. And excuse me, it's DSCal23, which is hilarious because it is now 2024. 
But if you use the DS Cal 23, which is when this Cal started, slash Mal, I randomly pick people out of that with a random number generator. And then I message you on Instagram and tell you you've won. And then you uh, send me your name and address. I did have a prize that did not make it to the person. Thankfully, she told me she didn't receive it. I would never know. I just send it regular mail. So if you ever don't get a prize for me, please let me know. Like, I feel bad. How many people thought they were getting a prize and then didn't get one? And that makes me sad. So always let me know, okay? So anyway, that's going on. I feel like this isn't... I feel like you're super high. That seems better. Okay, my last whip. Actually, this is really comfortable. I'm in like a chair and I'm all like balled up. I like it. My last whip is a big one. And I think I talked about this the last time. I got on my needles. It has taken me forever. I got the Voyage by Wool and Pine on my needles. It's not a huge start but it's a start. The reason that it has taken me so long is because there was major math involved here. I do not normally talk about, I, I don't normally go into depths um, on projects like this. Other podcasters do. It's just not, I usually just don't do this kind of stuff. But this is a bigger project. I kind of felt like I did this with the step aside a little. I swatched getting the right needle and I still don't know size wise. Um, there's some guessing happening. There is so much stuff with this. And I hemmed and hawed and went back and forth and couldn't decide and took all these measurements. And it was like a thing. I did a flipping project page, you guys. I don't ever do project pages. I don't. But I knew that I would need, I would need to have one with this. Uh, this is in my Katie Did bucket bag. I don't know if she still makes this style, but you can pull this down and it turns into a bucket like that. Isn't it cool? First off, I think the last time I talked to you guys, as all the stitches are coming off my needles, stand by. I stopped in the middle of a row. I was apparently in the middle of something. For those of you who don't know, I am using my Skein Cocaine David Bowie Advent. All the colors are in there. That'll be the next hurdle is picking what colors to knit where I'm just tickled that I figured out the sizing. This sweater, I'll just show you while I'm talking about it. This sweater calls for zero to four inches positive ease. I wanted the four inches positive ease. So I wanted to knit the size 46. I want this to be like bigger and comfier. You know what I mean? My math, I was not getting gauge calls for 28. I'm getting 29. I have done two swatches. Where's my other one? This was the first swatch. Did I show you guys this? Now I can't remember. Don't do what I'm doing. This is leftover yarn from my Super Fine Yarn Co. Advent from, was that last year? Two years ago. I think it was two years ago. It is the same weight as my skein cocaine. You really should swatch with the yarn you're using, but I did not want to bust into these because I didn't know how much or what colors I was going to want for this. So here again, this is going to be a gamble. It's another reason that I'm doing a project page because it will be interesting to see if this works out at all and I'm willing to take the gamble, which is hilarious because I am not a gambler. So there's that. I knit this on the wrong size needle. So then I did this on the needle size that the pattern called for. This is my, gonna be my cuff and arm, or arms and 
band, button band and hem and all that jazz. If I do this, it does go out, but it does want to pull in. God, see, now even looking at this, I feel like I need, this is what's been happening. I can't make up my mind. The pattern calls for a size five. This is a size five. See, looking at this now, I feel like I want to go up to a six. I like the fabric that the five's producing. I might just go up to a six. Fucking son of a bitch. <laughs> anyway, we'll, I'll figure that out when I get there. This is a five and it is too loose. So the yarn that I'm using for the hem and the bands, everything not the color work, is my linden wool, and these are the same colorway, but see the bottom one is darker. They came from different lots, because if you guys remember, I ordered this one first, and then I ordered another skein, and it was pretty different. So I was sort of worried about that, but that's why I swatched, and I've lost it, I haven't moved. You guys have seen it. I haven't moved, where the hell did it go? Found it, in, right here. I swatched it because I wanted to see if it would look stripey, and I wish I could show you better lighting. It does not look stripey at all. It looks really good. This is a light fingering, and this is on a size four. So I am going to knit the sleeves on a size four. And I think I might do the color work on a size six. See, in person, when you look at it, it doesn't look that bad. But man, on like you can, I can really tell the difference on the color work. Anyway, follow along for this little choose your own adventure project that could be epic or could be an absolute shit show. This is steaked. So you knit the color work all in one piece in the round and you steak not only the center up, but the arms. So that's going to be interesting. There are a couple things that I did on this that I wanted to talk about. I needed to look so I could remember. I have the button band or the hem, not the button band. I have this much of the hem done. Jiminy Christmas, you guys. I think this was one of those things where I was knitting late and I was like, okay, I need to go to bed now. And I just threw it down and now it's a mess. I did, and she did not specify in the pattern what cast on to use. She just told you to cast on X amount of stitches. I did a tubular cast on. And the reason that I did a tubular cast on is because I did this on The Weekender, Andrea Mowry's The Weekender, and absolutely loved it and was like, why? Like, I want to use this on every sweater now. I looked up she is new to me and you guys are probably going to be like, are you serious? She's amazing. You've just now found her. But Roxanne Richardson, I love her videos. She's great. Anytime I want to learn a technique now, I'm going to go to her. I just really, really like her. I loved how she did this tubular cast on. She does a great job of explaining it. Highly recommend. The other thing I'm going to do is on the sleeves, because I need to alternate skeins, usually I do the helic, helical knitting, and I was watching uh, Biscuit. She's also my friend. She has been recording. I'm so excited. She hasn't recorded in a long time. Hold on. Let me find her channel name, because I think she might have changed it. Okay, her YouTube is The Unwound Knitter. She'll be linked. I freaking love her. She's so my people. If you like my style, you will like her style. She mentioned on her podcast that she was doing um, the Easy Alternator by Professor Pearl instead of helical knitting. And I was like, I, I wanna, I wanna, 
I want to try this. I watched it and I'm going to try that for the sleeves. It's different than helical knitting and I think it's going to be easier, but we shall see. This entire project is going to be so much fun because it's going to be a challenge. But like I said, it's also going to be sort of a choose your own adventure. I mean, the color work, I haven't even decided on the colors. I don't even know how I'm going to do that yet. I just like have been struggling with whatever freaking size I was going to do. And as you can tell, I'm still struggling with it. Headless Dan back. The shelves are ready to be hung again. So finish your thought. Okay. Cut it oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm gonna go out and look at the shelves. That's basically all I wanted to say about the voyage. I, I'm, I feel like I'm just yammering on. So that is my last whip. Now I get to tell you about the event that I went to at Yarnbirds. It was so much fun. So Robin owns Yarnbirds. You have seen her at shows if you're in our area. Um, it is a, a truck with tons of yarn on it, and it's amazing. Well, then she has a bed and breakfast. I actually think she calls it an Airbnb, and I'm not totally positive what the difference between that and a bed and breakfast is. Either way, if you're interested, you can find it on her website. And underneath, she has her yarn shop, which isn't like a yarn shop that's open. It's only open for like special events and stuff. You know what I mean? Like the main stuff is her boss. So she had a weekend and I came and I read tarot cards and we stitched and bitched. And it was so much flipping fun. I get there and she's like, bring your bags upstairs, you know. So I go upstairs. She's showing me around. And she opens this curtain and you guys, I about pissed myself. There were people sitting in there. Like it scared me at first because there were people there. And then I realized who it was. Here's the video. Yeah. Yeah. I know, I know. We're, we're been super excited to <laughs> Freaking Aquila and Hazel, who is Aquila's daughter. I was so surprised. So we had like a little girls weekend slumber party. Um, we had a knit night on Friday night. Kristen brought me a six pack of beer. That's what I said I was going to talk about later. This beer that I'm drinking was one of them that she brought me. We had like these amazing tacos. Andrea made tacos. I Like, oh my God. It was just so much fun. So then Saturday, people came. Friday night was Robin's Knit Group. And we all met and had cocktails. And she did a live on Instagram. Some of you may have seen it. And then Saturday is when all the other people came. I did tarot readings. And it was just so nice because you have these... You know, the fiber festivals and you meet people and stuff. But then when you have a an event like what we had at the Nest, that's what she calls uh, the shop where like all of her yarn is. When you have an event like that, it's so intimate. Like I was able to sit down at the table and have conversations and meet people. And it, it was great. Joan came, she also brought me a six pack of beer and her husband picked it out. So Kristen's was all fruity beers, which I love. And then Joan's husband picked me out a bunch of like IPAs and pale ales. It, it was so cool. Not just because I got beer. Uh, Robin had a little snack spread out. Uh, Quilla had her sock machine there. Froggit Yarns was there as well. They also have a trailer. It is um, Tasha and Brian. I got to know them more. I mean, I always see them at shows, but I never get to visit with them, you know? So Tasha and Brian had a trunk show. They had yarn there as well. It was just so much fun. It was so, it could, I was high on 
life for the rest of the week. I mean, that just took me into the week and I was just like happy and lighthearted. And when I left, I missed them and wished I was still there. It was just a good, good time. So I met Tanya. I sat and uh, stitched and bitched with Tanya for a little bit. And she tells me that her husband, and I don't know if if this is a secret or not, she didn't tell me I couldn't tell. She said that it was like after COVID, but there was still like some myth going on. Her husband wanted to do something to make her laugh. And he created this character called Beyonce. And Beyonce has a YouTube channel. It is so funny. Beyonce's YouTube channel will be linked below. Then, uh... Leah and Rachel came and brought me Laura's cookies. You guys know I love Laura's cookies. So in Dayton, there's this, this hootie who bougie pinkies out bitches grocery store called Dorothy Market, Dorothy Lane Market. It's like bougier than Whole Foods. I've not been there yet. They have like awesome bakery items and they have Laura's cookies. And I've talked about them before. You guys are probably sick of hearing about them. But Leah always brings me Laura's cookies, and I was so excited to have them. They're so yummy. We went to dinner after the, the shindig. We all went out to have pizza at Dante's. I got to meet Andrea's husband, who dude looks like freaking Sam Elliott. He was awesome. I just had a blast. Just talking about it and remembering it makes me so happy. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Robin, for inviting me. Thank you to everybody who came. Uh, like some people came from hours away. That was really cool. I'm so happy to have gotten to hang out with you guys. I have to show you what Quill brought me. Shut up with the cuteness. She made it for me. It's beads. I don't know if you can see that. It's crocheted and there's beads. Look at its little tail. I mean, it's so cute. Oh my gosh. We need to name her, him, it. I don't know. I, of course, bought yarn. So here starts the wool piggery part of the show. I don't go on hauls very often like this, but I was high on yarn fumes. The yarn fumes made me do it. Robin had, they call it $10 alley. Everything was $10. So a lot of this stuff was from there. I already have one cake wound up, which you're not going to get to see true to, oh yeah, there you go. It is just brown yarn and it is Mountain Meadow Wool Touch of the West. That's what the label looks like. And this is in the Salem, well, it says Salem hand dyed charcoal. I don't know that I'd call that charcoal because it's definitely brown, but it is 100% Mountain Merino and it is plied. I don't know if you can see that. It's plied with a strand of silk. There you can kind of see it. It is non-superwash merino, actually right here too. Non-superwash merino plied with a strand of silk. Dan works with this dude named George and George is super, super cool. He has a hat that I was going to give to Goodwill. It was, it was like an old hat, Lions brand. It fit funny. I made it kind of when I first started knitting-ish. It was not a great hat. He has worn it every day for years. I mean, and Dan keeps saying, you really should knit George another hat. Like he's so knit worthy. He loves that hat. He wears it every day. So I'm going to make George a new hat. And I'm going to do the photographer hat. So it's uh, caked up, ready to go. Quill makes the photographer hat. She's made a gob of them and she loves the pattern. I have not knit the pattern. Real easy, ribbing, stockinette, but it's going to be a photographer hat for George. These are all from Yarnbirds. 
I got this Canon hand dies. I looked it up on the website. There's two names. So I don't know if this is even a thing anymore. This is a gradient Anton Aaron 100% super wash merino. It is so flipping soft. It's why I got it because I picked it up and I kept touching it and it's like, man, why is that so soft? I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. I got two skeins of War Hero. It's a Yarn Hero? Yarn Hero. I don't know where War Hero came from. <laughs> one is Stipple DK and one is Color Mix DK. They look like this. It's a little spin cycle-y looking. No idea what I'm going to do with it, but I did purchase them to go together to make one thing. This is what their label looks like. I got the Alpaca Yarn Company a spiral, a spiral random marl worsted weight. It looks like that. This is 100% alpaca and I bought this to make a hat for my brother. Then I got fi fibra fibralia, fi fiber fibrilla. I don't know how to say it. It's like fiber L Y A. And this is the Barnabos Barnab Barnabos Barnabas. That's an A. Barnabas. And I'm guessing that's the base maybe because the colorway is, I don't know. I apologize. I can't read the colorway. Oh, this looks, this is London and this is Carus, but it's like a black and a moon color. Sorry, the lighting, you guys. It's black and a, and a moony silvery gray color. And I'm going to make a headband with it. This one, I can't remember the name of it. I'm going to have to look it up. But I purchased it to do this, and I am hoping that I can get that headband as well as some mittens out of this. But, you know, it's going to ruminate in the stash for a little bit, marinate, whatever. I got this Fig and Posey Fiber Co. in the pear, and it has, like, fun speckles. And I got this just because I liked the color. I have no idea what it's for. And then I got two skeins of Bulky Magpie because why not? I think these might go in the prize bin. And that's all I got from Robin. Then Froggit had Boucle. Look at that. And this just kept talking to me. This is their Merlot Cozy DK Boucle. And I purchased this in mind to go with this skein that I got from Deep Dyed, which is on her slub base. I just thought that that would be cool to go together. Isn't it cool? No idea what I'm going to make with this. She has some new colorways coming out. Uh, Tasha and Brian do. Tasha dies. I would look at her stuff so that you can check out her new colorways as well. And that's that. That's the end of the wool piggery. You know, I don't do that very often. And like I said, I, I was impaired. I was high on yarn fumes. That was all just in the nest. I didn't even make it on the truck. Robin had the truck pulled up and all open for people to shop too. I didn't even make it out there. Everything I bought was in the nest and I had so much stuff. I was like, I, I can't, I was totally going to go out and I felt bad because Robin went out and like opened the truck for me because I was going to keep shopping. And then I looked at what I had. I was like, I can't even go out there, dude. Like, I don't need any more things. Like I was just throwing things in a basket. It was ridiculous. But next up is Happy Mail. I did get a couple things. Super, super sweet. Just because people are so nice, Kathleen sent me the mini and pearl needle stoppers in the roller skates. I'm really bummed. There was an old school skate last night. Oh, goodness. 
there was an old school skate last night at the rink and a friend invited me to go and I just didn't have it in me. It was 9.30 to 11. I wanted to go so bad, but I did like other stuff yesterday. And I don't know about you guys. Um, I'm old, so I can only do like a couple things in a day. I don't have that like ramrod attitude I did when in my 20s where I could just wake up and not stop all day. And then Annie from Hooked on Wishing Crochet, she has a YouTube channel. It'll be linked. She sent me like a little Valentine package. Do you remember these doilies? She got me a slap bracelet that's a ruler. And it was just in an envelope and I told her that I got it. And she was like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad it made it there. Um, I didn't know if it would snap in the mail. I mean, it was just in a regular envelope and it didn't, you guys, not once. But can you imagine? Like after she said that, I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even think of that. Like what if it would have gotten bent and that, that would have made for an interesting uh, package arrival, right? She got me some stickers, crochet or die. And shh, I'm counting. We've all done that, right? I just count louder. Then she got me this little heart-shaped notebook. Jawsome Valentine. And, oh, here's another one. But first, crochet. So I'll put those on, on my cup. I forgot I had a beer. I haven't even been drinking that. And then a couple cute little... It's a little key with a little glass flower. So we're adding in an extra. I went to the post office box and somebody sent ditto something. Okay, Bubba's, look. Dawn got you something. I know, sit. Ah. Ah, ah. Hey. Oh. Right. Oh, look at it. Oh, my. I hope that's a toy. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, it's a collar. You can't have it. Hold on. Oh, it's New Glarus Brewing. Okay, hold on. Instructions for Ditto. Every girl is crazy about a well-dressed man. Put this on before giving the box to Chevis. Oh, so maybe the rest is for me. No, 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 no. That's a candy cane. Okay, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> it turned into a shit show. <laughs> Tell Dawn thank you. Thank you, Dawn. Upon further inspection of the box, this is also for him. Come, sit, break. <laughs> what is it? Hey, Chavis, I really like your plant right here. Stop, shush. What is it? Show the people. Let me see it. Let me see it. It's a beer bottle for New Glarus. <laughs> That's it, guys. I hope you guys have had a great weekend. If you like this shit show, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that happy horse shit. We'll catch you on the flip side. Later.